Blood. 
Hallelujah. We have a prayer request. I didn't see Miss Yolanda. Where is she? Her hand, your your brother, and they may have to amputate his leg. Amen. Father, let's come on, let's lift our hands up. Father, we lift our hands up in one accord, and we bring to you Yolanda's brother, Father God. Lord, he's gone through so much, Lord God, and you know his history, but you're his God. And we ask for a creative miracle right now that you would restore that leg, Lord God, that you would drive out infection and disease. You said by your stripes he was healed. We apply that word, Father God, to that leg right now. We stand with Yolanda, Lord God. Oh, they've suffered so much. He suffered so much. Oh, God, but I thank you that there is joy that you pour out, Lord God, in the midst of suffering. And we ask that the joy and Involved with healing would be poured out as his healing manifests even now. Father, we curse the infection, Lord God. Even Jesus, as you curse that fig tree, we curse it according to the divine pattern that you laid out for us. And Father, we command infection to leave that area. We speak healing. We speak the blood of Jesus flowing. We speak restoration, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for life. For your name, Lord God, represents everlasting life. It is everlasting life. We apply the name Jesus to that area even right now. Father, we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Healing Jesus.
of the earth shall soon dissolve like snow. Sun, forbear to shine. for that grace, Jesus. We thank you for that amazing grace, that unmerited favor that's upon all of us. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, you may be seated tonight. Amen. Up stuff. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just excited. And I just, I just feel... I just feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now. Amen. I mean, I do. I know it's kind of like we, we but, but there's an anointing for the baptismal in the Holy Ghost right now. Uh, uh, for evidence of speaking in a new language, a new tongue. It's, it's right now. You know, somebody should have been running down here right now. Because see, when the water's in trouble, you can't wait. You see, the man at the pool of Bethesda said if someone could just get me to the water because the water is moving if i can ju just can somebody dump me in the water of the holy ghost where i will have my healing and my joy and ever just speaking in a new language i don't know about you but it's nothing like it it's nothing like being baptized in the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Because the enemy knows once you have received that, you have taken yourself from ground zero and you are now in the atmosphere past the hemisphere where God abides and only you and him understand what is going on. Satan don't have no reign in that atmosphere. You can be a child, you can be older than old, but if you don't have the baptismal, you're missing the opportunity because the waters are being troubled. And when the waters have stopped troubling, it ain't no need to get in there. Because <laughs> God then just went on back and said, you know what, I'll come again. Thank you, Father. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My spirit is here, my people. Sup in my spirit. And I will sup with you. Enjoy my spirit and I'll enjoy you. For I desire for you to be with me. I desire for you to communicate with me, not in your hell, not in your earthly language, but in your heavenly language. This is for those that want to move into the holies of holies. Well, I got a bite. In Jesus' name. Healing waters, healing waters. Thank you for your power. Lord. Thank you for your power. 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 
Oh, we oh, sit in your soul. presence, Lord God. Yes. Saturate us, Lord oh. God. Oh, yeah. oh, saturate us, saturate us. Oh, renew touch, Lord God. Oh, Ramama Sokoranda Bahaya. Oh, a brand new touch, Lord God. Fill us, fill us, fill us to overflow. Fill our cups, fill our cups. Oh, Drive out fear. Drive yes. out doubt. Yes. Drive out unbelief. Yes. Drive out complacency. Yes. Oh, may we be heated and on fire for you. May we have a passion for the things of you, Lord God. Oh, Saturate us, Lord God.
Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. <laughs> oh, I thank you, Jesus. That we're a church that obey you. I thank you, Jesus, for your power and your spirit that moves upon us. In time of trouble, there you are in the midst of us. We thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you, Father. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul thirsts for you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Ma, ma, ma. Anybody need a tie in a little? Please raise your hand. Thank you, Father. Oh, I need one. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. I want us. Daddy, most of you were there. But it was packed house. Amen. We were just so blessed. But I want to share quickly what the Holy Ghost did. Uh, Minister Sandra, of course, prayed for people and prayed for their healing. And two testimonies in particular. One minister. Now, she was an intercessor that came from the Beaumont area somewhere. Had, had been in an accident years ago and, and so forth. And she shared how the power of the Holy Ghost moved in her neck area. At the end of that meeting, she began to share. And then uh, what blessed me, uh, Jessica, that we all know that comes here, and I know Jessica personally, and she's been suffering with that neck area and back area for a long time. And she came after everybody was gone. <laughs> she said she wanted to be sure. But Minister Sandra had her stretch her arms out. And, uh, and it was obvious one was quite a bit shorter, and we saw, you know, the moving down, but Jessica said heat began to flow from, from this part of her arm all the way up that shoulder and into her back, and the pain was gone. She shared that after it was all over with, she felt it. God is good, amen. And I tell you, when we cry out to him, he answers, amen. It blessed me so much. It was packed house, past the Lord. We had to pull out a chair, too. I had kind of moved away some of the chairs just to give everybody elbow room. We had to pull them back out. So we're believing God is going to be like that all over this church, amen. People are going to be hungry for a church moving in the power of the Holy Ghost. And all of us that were there, we heard the wonderful things through Minister Sandra's uh, ministry that God is doing over in China. But we know he's no respect of persons. Amen. He's doing it right here, too. God bless you. Please welcome Pastor Lord as he comes to teach us tonight.
sorrowful and uh, people are being prayed for and ministered to in a wonderful way. And then Sunday night again, and it was a, a different uh, complexion on the move of the Holy Ghost, wasn't it? There's so many different faces. God has so many different faces, and, and he moved in again and blessed people. And then tonight, it's just carrying on uh, for God's presence. And there's such a thing as build up, you know. This builds up and it builds up. Bad into it, you know. Like the kid won't mind, and then he won't mind, and it builds up, builds up, builds till you have to do something. The same thing happens in for good, too. It just builds up and builds up and builds up until something wonderful happens. Uh, uh, and more in that uh, ebb tide is when it goes out, right? Isn't that ebb tide? Some of you sailors, Brother Lee, what's ebb tide? The tide, no, that, well, what's the opposite of ebb tide? A what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, then, but we've just, what he said, we got just the opposite. Whatever the name is for it, the nautical name is that, the moon, you know, puts it draws up that water, then it releases it by the gravity they claim. The moon controls the tide. And who's the moon? The church of the living God. Who's the sun? It's Jesus. But anyway, this something's flowing. Something wonderful is flowing through the church of New Beginning. High tide. Oh, it needs a better name than that, Brother Lee. It's just, it's just, it's starting to f come in and come in and come in and come in and come in. And I don't want to miss it, do you? Don't miss a service. Don't miss a service. <laughs> but the little boy that he had a sore throat, he was big enough to stay home alone. You could do that years ago. You can't do that now. But so his mom and dad went to church, left the boys, you know. Anyway, he was... Uh, had a sore throat, so <clears throat> uh, the, the mom and dad come home, and he said, how was the service? And and the dad said, oh, son, he said, you should have been there. Jesus showed up. Ah, he said, you might know, he said, the day I was sick, Jesus would show up at our church. <laughs> you know, and he meant spiritually, right? But the little boy took him, like literally in the flesh, that Jesus showed up. But one day he is going to show up in the flesh, isn't he? And he's going to put all the skeptics. Think how embarrassed these skeptics are going to be. These atheists and those who think Jesus was just a teacher or just a man. Anyway, praise God. I've had a wonderful day. I went Claire to off of Highway 6 today. Down there this afternoon. And, and uh, me and my grandson went and. I set up a bed over uh, over here in Baytown, and we had a, quite an experience with that. Uh, anyway, God was with us, and I was really proud of my grandson, and I struggle with the heavy end of that bed when I'm by myself. It makes my back hurt. And uh, so anyway, I was we were taking the stuff off the truck and putting it in this home, and... Um, I looked over, and he grabbed the heavy end of that bed and picked it right up, about five feet off the ground, brought it in like it was a newborn baby. I said, wow, because he's twice as big as I am. So he said, let's see, what's 150 times two? I said, and then almost. Uh, anyway, uh, but I, I thank God for power. And that's what God will do. And we think something is such a big, heavy problem to us. God will send someone in and just lift that right up and carry it over for us. That's what happens in the service tonight. It's the flood of the Spirit. It's coming in. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Hallelujah. So I'm glad for the presence of God. We're in the right track, you know. Keep, on, keep it up, Sister Pat. Keep it up, Pastor John. 
ladies and gentlemen, keep it up, Chris. God's going to do wonderful things, Chris. We love people. Amen. Well, I had a little clip to show, and I might have mentioned it before, but it's awesome. It's just awesome. And I want you to see the glory of God. Would you like to see the glory of God? The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth shows its handiwork. awesome and what that's awesome how's that make you feel almost weak in the knees doesn't it huh makes you almost feel weak but you see the glory of God and I found that I, I told my daughter at work that I think it was yesterday 
And uh, I'll ask you the question, how big is your God? That's a big God that did that. How big is your God? The Bible says in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heavens, V. Canis Majoris. He created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light that it was what? Good. Good. Remember the movie um, uh, uh, um, Bruce Almighty? Good. Good. And finally, it's good. Now, then uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 says that. John chapter 1 says it a different way. But it's the same thing. John chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the you can come with me if you want to. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things. Everybody say all things. All things. Even this thing. Even this huge thing. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So that's God. How big is your God? Huh? I feel ashamed sometimes that I kind of shrink back in my faith. You know, sometimes you're not always riding high in the saddle, are you? A lot of times you feel like, oh, man, you know, they, they made up a dance here about a year, what was it, about uh, uh, 10 years ago called the worm. You ever see anybody do the worm where they get on the ground and, and they act like a worm? I'm not going to do it. But anyway, they do the worm. Sometimes I feel like a worm, but even the Bible recognizes when we feel like a worm. Sometimes I feel like a king, don't you? Sometimes I just feel like tonight. What was any better than tonight? I felt like when God's presence was moving, I sat down and stretched my legs out like in the lazy boy chair, and I almost felt like God was kissing my face all over. Has anyone ever kissed your face all over? All over your face. God was kissing my soul, I guess, all over. I love that, don't you? He loves us. And this is the God that loves us. This powerful God, this creator God, this God that can do anything. Hallelujah. And then the scripture in John says, in him was life. Everybody say life. Not death. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is what? According to 1 Corinthians death. Death is the last enemy. When Christ comes, everything's going to be put under his feet and he shall reign forever and ever. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. No more death. Think of it as no more death now. Wouldn't it be one? Think of the pain and heartache. One death cause. Huh? Think of it. No more death. But if we're in Christ Jesus and we give our life to him and he lives inside of us, We'll never die. This will never die. Huh? Get old and cranky or whatever. Our neck hurts, our leg hurts, whatever. Our ankle hurts or whatever. And he's all, this is just the body. That's just a shell, like a peanut. The meat's on the inside. The good. Have you ever eaten a peanut shell? Come on now, as a kid. Have you, a kid eats anything. A kid will eat anything. Anything at all. Dirt. Worse than dirt. Kids will eat anything because their mouth, they want to, that's how they, they see whether it's soft or hard or whatever, and they bring it to their mouth and that instinct. But the, like one, one guy said, this, the, this guy was a, quite a character and he died. And the guy was uh, uh, giving a little eulogy. He said, this is just the shell. He said, the nut's gone on. <laughs> and everybody knew what he's talking about because he was a crazy, crazy individual. The nuts gone on. Well, I'm telling you, they call us nuts, you know. They think we're crazy for wasting our time in church. My sister-in-law told 
uh, told Millie, she said, why does Lloyd wasting his time ministering and in church when he could, you know, be something? I are something. I'm a child of God. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. John, I wouldn't trade it for anything. That touch of God that we felt tonight, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Praise God. This is the greatest thing there is. There isn't anything greater. And, and people just sell out for pennies and trinkets and fame and money and whatever. And that's no, it just ends up in ashes. I read a story one time, kind of like an O. Henry story. Remember O. Henry? He wrote those stories with a surprise ending, little short stories. Uh, uh, anyway, he uh, it stories told that the he wrote a story about that guy that sold his soul to the devil. And uh, he said, "I want um, I want a whole." He named the amount a billion dollars, or well, way back then it was like in the forties, fifties. It'd be like a million dollars would be fantastic. He wanted a million dollars, so he sold his soul to the devil. Signed his signed on the dotted line and then he said okay where's my money and the devil dragged in a big case and when he opened it up it was confederate money after the civil war you know how much confederate money was worth after the civil war nothing that's devil's tricky don't sell out you get the best thing there is in the beginning this, this star, and that was in kilometers, uh, uh, and I tried to figure it up in miles. It said it was like 2.8 kilometers, 2.8 billion kilometers across. Well, a kilometer is like uh, 0.6 miles. And so then the, so you have to figure the circumference. That's just through. That's not all the way around. And I figured it's roughly 3.5 billion miles around the surface of that planet if you went in one direction till you get back to that same direction. Three and a half billion miles in circumference. And that 900 kilometers is like 540 miles per hour. Going 540 miles per hour, it would take you 1,100 years to circle that one star. Isn't that amazing? That's how big God is. And that's probably just trinkets compared to what else is out there. I want God to show me what else is out there. I can't ask God that one time. I said, God, I want, I want you to take me on a tour. Or send someone, an angel or something, and go on a tour and see what else is out there. Don't you? I'd like to know. I'd like to know. And, and this is just, to me, it made me, feel, made me feel humble at first and insignificant. But then it made me feel, my God is big. How big is your God? Well, I'll tell you how big Moses' God was. Moses, remember, he ran from Pharaoh because he, he killed the Egyptian because he was fighting with a Hebrew. And then, uh, and then he got afraid, so, so he ran for his life. He was like the stepson of the Pharaoh, and he ran for his life into the wilderness, into the desert, into the Sinai Desert. And there God appeared to him after, after, what, 40 years? You know, for 40 years, Moses lived in the palace. Except for three months, he lived with his mama. And then she had to give him up or they're going to kill him, right? The, the law was to kill the babies. And so she put him in a little boat, a little, little basket, and asked the sister to look after him. Kind of like in our family. Mom had so many kids that the older sisters looked after us little ones. And we used to call our older sister, sister. You know, she was like, an honorary mama. And so anyway, you know, bumped into the Pharaoh's daughter's leg. On, you know, she was bathing herself in the water. And so he took up, the, she, she opened the little basket, and there the baby cried. And for 40 years, Moses lived in the palace. Do you know there's a new prince you know? You know what his name is? Prince George. That's Queen Elizabeth's father's name, I think. Prince George. Should have called him Lloyd or something, right? Yeah, George Alexander. And so in the four, first 40 years, the scholar said Moses learned that he was something. I'm the prince. I'm the prince. Then for the next 40 years in the wilderness, he learned he was nothing. 
He didn't have anything of his own. He kept his father-in-law's sheep. You ever work for relatives? How many's ever worked for a relative? You don't get rich working for relatives. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I work for one. She's not here, so I can say it. No, we are okay. Then the next last four, after God appeared to Moses and said, Moses, I want you to go back to Egypt. And he had to drag Moses back to Egypt. He didn't want to go. So he went, and he, and he said, I can't go. I can't talk. I don't know anything, you know, and I stutter. And God got out of patience with him. And he said, what's that in your hand? He said, a staff. It was a wooden staff. It was before plastic. It's a wooden staff. He said, throw it down. And what did it become? A snake. A venomous snake. Now, that didn't take too much faith to throw that stick down. But when it became a venomous snake, and God said, pick it up, that took a lot of faith. You know, God asked me to do some things. It's easy. He expects me to come to church. That's easy. I love to come to church, don't you? I kind of feel vacant in here when I don't attend church. Right? We feel vacant because we look. You know why? Because we get so much out of it. Oh, we say we come to worship God, but actually we got an ulterior motive, don't we? It makes us feel better. It makes us feel cleaner. You know, your mind is different. You're not so depressed. You're not so, you know, you're not so uh, 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 angry. You're not so out of sorts. I delivered a bit today and must have had a, some kind of yard guy that must have been kinfolk or something because he was doing the yard, but it was, it was like a garage that was made over into a home, and, and, and they still had the part of the garage with the big, big door going up. It was quite a little situation there. And, and, and he, was, he was, had a leaf blower, and he walked right into that garage where my son and I were trying to set up that bed about five feet from us. <laughs> wow, it got on my nerves, and I said, Alex, this is, Wow. You right in there, that big loud, you know how loud a motor is inside? Well, so anyway, anyway, he, they asked him to do something. He didn't want to do it. And a uh, phone rang, and they wanted him to answer because the old guy was sick. And then the, uh, the old guy that was sick and the, and, the, and the caregiver were both smoking cigars. That was kind of unique. You know, I've never seen, you know, that's the only second woman I ever see smoke a cigar. The first one was a lady named Annie Vale. She was an elementary school teacher. And she taught my younger sister at a little country school, Annie Vale. And, you know, she'd bring out her cigar and smoke at noontime. But guess what she did? She made those children memorize Luke chapter 2, the Christmas story. So, but anyway, she would smoke that cigar. Now they wouldn't allow it, I suppose, right? No smoking in school. But she wasn't young either. She was a quite a lady. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. And then, and then they wanted him. The old guy was not feeling good and couldn't sign papers. And the lady decided to sign for him. And she was smoking a cigar. The old guy was smoking a cigar. And the, and the yard guy got perturbed because he didn't want to answer the phone and talk to the uh, whatever co TV company that he wanted a TV service put in. And then he, got, he was hot and irritated. And I think he thought we wanted him to set up the bed. That's what I think. I said, no, we'll set up the bed. That's fine. And then finally he lost his patience, got cussing and cussing and walked out. I looked at Alex and, woo, you know, that's a new experience for us, <laughs> you know. Uh, so anyway, that's, that was, but, you know, people have times like that. Sometimes you feel like a worm down. And the Bible says to Jacob, fear not, thou worm, Jacob. That's what the scripture says. Fear not, you worm, Jacob. I will make you a sharp, it's hard for me to say, a sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Now, you, how many's ever picked up a worm? How many's ever gone fishing? You've not? They're a little, they're a little soft. You could go like that and, you know, you could kill them just like that. Little caterpillar, they're just so soft and vulnerable. That's how we feel sometimes. But God said, this God that made V. Canis Majoris said, I'll make you something, a sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Hallelujah, that you can do some damage. You can eat some steak. 
Hallelujah. You can do some good with those teeth. Who was it said? Someone said, we got all our own teeth. That's something in there. You kept your own teeth. You evidently didn't play hockey if you kept your, all your own teeth. Here he said, but how big is your God? Moses' God was so big that God said, what's that in your hand? Moses threw the stick down, became a snake. And God said, pick it up. He picked it up, probably by the tail, right? And it became a staff again. Now, that was a wooden staff. Now, wood in the Bible is a type of humanity. Gold is a type of divinity. And in the tabernacle, some things were wood overlaid with brass. Some things were just brass. That's the, the sacrificial part. Other things were gold, menorah, and all that. Then you get into the, 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 the incense altar. It was wood overlaid with gold. You got over with the showbread table with the priest ate. It was wood overlaid with gold. Then in the holiest of holies, that the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat over the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant that had the mercy seat on top of it, the lid, where the two angels were, that they carved them out, where the blood of sacrifice was sprinkled once a year so that the sins of Israel would roll back. And guess where they rolled to eventually? You guess where they rolled to? All of those sins. Imagine how many sins Israelites committed in a year. They weren't good people, you know. They were rowdy, rowdy people. And all those sins kept rolling ahead, rolling ahead, Alex, until they landed on who? Jesus Christ on Calvary. That's right. His death was so horrible. But here, he said, pick it out of the human. This is the type of humanity. Now, I like it. But when the anointing of Almighty God came through Moses, through his arm, and into that staff, God accomplished some things. Hallelujah. He walked down into Egypt with that staff. He held it out over Egypt. Flies. Ten plagues came over Egypt. Finally, they let the Israelites go. He stood at the Red Sea, and he said, Lord, I don't know what to do. The army is going to kill us all, and my people want to kill me too. And God said, just do what you always do. Because that wooden staff was anointed by God. You know, God can accomplish great things when humanity is touched by divinity. And that's what Sister was talking about Saturday, Sunday night. Is she was trying to bring us up a level where the divinity of Almighty God could flow through us to minister to others. Amen? Amen. To heal the brokenhearted. To heal and to minister. Hallelujah. So the wooden. And this Ark of the Covenant was wood overlaid with gold. Now today, it was wood overlaid with gold. Now the, the Bible says in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, but we have just treasure. But we have this treasure. What treasure? What did pastor talk about at the altar, at the, at the uh, offering? He talked about receiving God's presence into our lives. And Paul said, we have this treasure. And it is a treasure. We have this treasure where? Oh, just when we come to church, like we check in our coat at a fancy restaurant? No. We have this treasure in our, not just this, but our earthen vessels. So when we leave this church, go to work, go to bed, Eat lunch, whatever we do, we have a treasure in these earthen vessels. Now, that's what gets complicated. Sometimes, Jack, we see the vessel. Other times, we see the treasure. I like it when I see the treasure. Don't you? I like it when I see the treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Like the, like the uh, old preacher said, folks be folks. They're going to be folks. No, ains, no wings yet, huh? Folks be folks. That means that they're, they got a treasure of the Holy Spirit, but it's in an earthen vessel. How conde not condescending, how stripped himself of so much just to live with us. It cost God a lot just to live with us and think to be in us now. 
how humiliating that could be for God to live in us. But he does. The, tap yourself. You have a treasure. And it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's God's presence living in you. And all that the anointing of Almighty God would flow to us more and more and more and more until not just dozens or hundreds, but thousands and millions are reached by the power of God. Do you like that? Do you want that? You have that, you know. Okay, now here, how big is your God? Moses' God was so big that Moses walked down into Egypt with a staff, and he, when he came back out, he had over 3 million people following him because there were 600,000 men between the ages of 20 and 50. And there's always a lot of kids and always a lot of women. These were just, six, these were just 600,000 men who were like military age. Not the teenagers, not the children, not the women. Young, old, and, and the older men weren't counted. So it's easily three million people that God took out of Egypt with just a wooden staff. Because God anointed that man, and that anointing came through that staff, and he held that up, something happened. Remember in the battle in the wilderness when he held that staff up, he held his hands up? Something happened. Three million people. Now, <clears throat> not only did he bring them out of Egypt, he fed them and clothed them for 40 years. Now, how much groceries does it take to feed three million people for 40 years? No supermarket, no Jovis. No, I live near Jovi, so no Kroger, no Sam's Club, no, you know, no bakery, no Golden Corral, no Mexican restaurant. You getting hungry? Okay. That's how big their God was. He fed them and clothed them and protected them from their enemies for 40 years. That's how big he was. He provided. What a provider. What a provider. So when you think, when you get low on groceries, huh, or things are kind of thin on the money side, think of this big star that God made. Think of him bringing 3 million people and feeding them for 40 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank God. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now, Jeremiah 32, there's a question in verse 37. And in verse 7, this is God's question. But before God answered it, Jeremiah gave the answer. But before God posed the question, Jeremiah answered it. He already knew. Okay, let's turn to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 32. Of course, they're in trouble. Of course, they're being invaded. Of course, God is punishing them for their sins. And here he says, verse 17, ah, just like, just takes his breath away. Did that take your breath away, that little video? Oh, ah, Lord God. He said, behold, or look at this. <clears throat> you have made heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. Um, and thing in there is nothing too hard for thee. Now the God replies in verse 27. Oh, excuse me. I got that wrong. Verse 26, excuse me, up there. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, or Jehovah, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No. There's nothing too hard for God. He's so big. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. Did you ever sing that in Sunday school? My God is so big, so strong. And the kids go, strong and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. What's the rest of it? He da, 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 created the worlds or whatever. I forget the rest. Our God is big. Our God is a big God. And I'm ashamed of myself. 
for lack of faith. When we come face to face with this God, face to face with this God that delivered the children of Israel and looked after them. If he looked after three million people for 40 years when there was nothing there, nothing growing, and he had to rain down manna from heaven every day except for the seven. And Friday night, they gathered twice as much, and it lasted. If they gathered twice as much on Thursday, half it became rotted. Remember? God wanted us to do it every day. So that Ark of the Covenant would, okay, how big is your God? Now, God has two plans. God has two plans. Well, he probably has more than that, but for simplicity's sake. There's his poverty plan. God has a poverty plan. Austerity measures. You know, when you cut things, you never cut your budget right to the bone. Then he has a bonus plan. I like this one myself. This is a good one. Because this reminds me of this, of what God can do. Now, God's poverty plan is good, too. It's still God. It's still God, and God is still wonderful. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. This is God's poverty program. But my God, Paul said, and your God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's needs. That's not luxuries. That's not extras. That's not that extra. That's not pie. That's meat and potatoes. I like lemon meringue pie. I love lemon meringue pie. And, 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 and when they make it, they uh, would make it with, and somehow when the meringue was finished, there'd be a little dewdrop or something out of that meringue. How many's ever seen that? Man, that's good. I love that. That's not in, that's not in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Potatoes is sardines. How many's ever eaten sardines? I'll tell you if, you, if you did, we're going to know it, right? One thing I hate about sardines is just as soon as you open that can, you got to put it in a little bag. Then you got to put the can, that can bag, in another bag to hide the smell, right? But it's supposed to be good for you, right? It's supposed to be good for you. Anyway, sardines. But my God shall supply all your sardines <laughs> according to his riches and glory because all the fish, if all the cattle is his, Brother Benny, if all the cattle are his, you found that out, didn't you? Then all the fish are his, even the little sardines, the little humble sardine. God will provide you some sardines. It's then God has a, I'm going to tell you the story first. There was a lady out in Phoenix, and she lived in a, d a desert area where the wind would blow. Guess what happens when the wind blows? Dust storm. And that dust would come right into her house. This was before, like, you know, uh, uh, airtight houses and all of that. And the dust would come in because she'd have the, the screens open and stuff, you know, so she could get some air. And the dust would come in, and, oh, she was... Just sweeping and sweeping. She said, Lord, she said, I need a vacuum cleaner to clean up this dust this, from these dust storms. She said, just an old one is fine. Well, she was praying Philippians 4.19. And so, sure enough, she went to church. Someone gave her a vacuum cleaner, old vacuum cleaner. So she was doing it. And all of a sudden, that vacuum cleaner cough. <coughs> what happens when the vacuum cleaner coughs? Poof! All that dust goes back on, and it's worse than before. So she kind of did it again, a little hurried, and got kind of aggravated with it. And the Lord spoke to her and said, You told me you wanted to use one. I would have given you a new one, but you asked for a used one. And I wanted to answer your prayer. God taught her a lesson. The poet said, we come before an awesome king. 
great petitions with you bring. Hallelujah. Is there anything too hard for me, God said? And Jeremiah said, Lord, you, you made the heavens and the earth by your outstretched arm. And I want that arm of God to be outstretched over this congregation tonight. Hallelujah. Like it was Sunday morning. Like it was Sunday night. Like it was during the worship service. Hallelujah. I want it to be stretched over Marilyn. I want it to be stretched over Marie, over Jack, over me. Over you, every one of you. But something happens, Pastor, when the mighty, mighty, arm of God is outstretched. He's always powerful. He's always God. But sometimes it's like it's not moving. You know, you can have a wonderful car in your garage, but if you never crank it up and go anywhere, you're not utilizing that power. Oh, Lord Jesus, that treasure that we have, help us, not for selfish reasons. God don't mind us having stuff, but for glory. For your glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. So here, God, this is God's poverty program. And I didn't know whether to write this or not. This is God's food, stamp, food stamps program. You know, there's certain things you can't buy with food stamps. Alcohol. Alcohol. I don't think you can buy cigarettes. Can you with food stamps? I don't know. Anyway, but I thank God for this program. Because it helps a lot of people. It feeds a lot of hungry kids that will go hungry. I'm not making fun of this program. Thank God. And you help provide that program. Thank God for it. Then there's God's bonus. Everybody say bonus. How many ever got a bonus? How many's ever worked and got a bonus? You get a bonus? See? You get a bonus? Have you ever got a bonus? I like getting bonuses. I know one day at Nissan, one day at Nissan we were sitting in the, in the conference room before Saturday because the big selling day. We were sitting around the table there and they were cranking us up, you know, to go sell and eat the customer whole, you know, while the managers are. So anyway, uh, they had a little contest. Like, and then if you, if you, if you they had a question and then if you knew the answer, like, what specifications come on a certain package on a, on a, whatever it is, on a Maxima or on a Ultima or on a Sentra? And then they, the question rolled around. And my turn, they said, what, 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 what's the Texas package on the, uh, on the Nissan Tundra? Not Tundra. <sighs> what's the Nissan big truck? I even forgot. I used to sell them, and I forgot. What? Well, Titan, thank you, sister. I can't, I used to sell them. See, that's how old I am. It's nice to be young in a sister Valerie. Anyway, the question came to me and said, what's on the Texas package? And they said, if you get, you have to get three of them. And so, and they said, no, they said two out of the three. And they said, we'll double your money if you guess all three but you can't go back to guessing all two. So I said, let's go for it. I guessed all three specifications on the Texas package on the Tundra. Chrome wheels. I forgot the other two. But I got it. Guess what I got? $200. Someone said, man, Lloyd's going to buy a good lunch today for us all. But I didn't. They can buy their own lunch. 200 bucks. That felt good to me. Wow, that felt bonus. That was no $20. Oh, here's $20. Thank God for $20. I've been needing $20 before. But $200, I know not a lot of money to Jack or some of you guys. Yeah. Wow. See, that, that blew my story right out of the water. Thank you. 
See, that just blew my story right out of the water, didn't it? See, see, Lee's living on this planet here, isn't he? Huh? Because he's a great worker and he's a skill, skilled trader. That's the reason. I just poor humble salesman. Anyway, don't you? Did you like that bonus, Brother Lee? Wow, thirteen thousand dollars. I almost feel like whoopee. It feels good when something happens. A bonus program. Now you know where God's bonus program is? Yes. It's in the Old Testament. It's in Psalms thirty-seven. I had it marked. Psalms 37 in verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee sardines. No. And he shall give thee what? Desire. What? The desire of thine heart and this is God's bonus program and that's the one that I want to work sometimes I need this God will supply my need because he teaches us right and he doesn't want to spoil us but every once in a while we get in on the bonuses this is food stamps but this is a feast hallelujah mm. oh man it's good huh just finger licking good. That'd be a good advertisement for somebody, wouldn't it? Finger licking good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, children of the most high God. Remember the Matthew West song? I am, defeat says this and, and regret says this. I'm going to just when you climb up, I'm going to pull you back down. But then Matthew West wrote those inspired words. But I am a child of the most high king. And I'm not defined by what has been. Hallelujah. This is God's bonus program. Thank you. I want to get in on God's bonus program. God, sign me up. Let's all say that. God, sign me up, God. Sign me up, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you know, when I was in Nova Scotia, uh, we started a mission church in in. And I know one month we lived on $70. That was like 72, something like that, 71. Build a new church too. $70. Anyway, that was just that one month, 70. And we weren't always bonus program. But my wife decided, she said, you know, conference is coming up. And she said, you need one of those leisure suits. Remember the leisure suits? Anyway, I said, okay. And, uh, you know, we just was... Sort of under God, uh, Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your need. And he did. Every car payment was met. So I went up to camp meeting. I went, we got there a couple days early, went to the superintendent's house. And I got in there, and uh, he's tall and thin. She was short and a great musician and an evangelist. And he was tall, tall, dignified man. His name is John is Nyla. And so Nyla was always fussing about something, like fussing in a good way. We should do this, we should do that. And she said, Brother Scott, she said, there's a man that came by and gave us a suit. And she said, when I saw it, I thought of you. I guess she thought I needed one. But I had clothes. You know what I mean? I wasn't threadbare. I had clothes. And so anyway, she said, here. She said, here, I'll go get it. So I went in one of the rooms there in, uh, in Halifax or Dartmouth uh, in Nova Scotia, and I tried on the suit. Brother Jack, it fit me across the shoulders, across the waist, in the arm length, and, and even in my short legs. Exactly, Brother John. It was like tailored to me. Exact. God knows your size. God knows your size. And I walked out of that room just like, pow, wow. So anyway, I even got comments on it that week. And, and, and no, I guess, that's right. I came up for youth because I had, I had to, I was in charge of the, of the youth camp, uh, of the children in youth camp. And so the last uh, night of the youth camp awards night, I wore my leisure suit. It was powder blue. I look good. 
Man, I look good in a powder blue suit. And you know why I look good? Because it was a bonus. God knows our size, exactly what we need. I used to have trouble when I was younger that my shoulders were too wide for my stomach. So I was like 150 pounds. So what fit me in the shoulders, you know, it was like I could carry a baby in there or something, you know. But then as I got older, everything evened out, you know, so I didn't have no trouble. But I had a little trouble getting something to fit me because if it fit me nice here, it was too tight in the shoulders. But I'm telling you, Sister Pat, it was exactly my size. God knows your size. Not just physically, but spiritually, God knows your size. He knows how hungry you are for his presence. He knows how hungry you are for to see miracles done. He knows how hungry you are to see children saved and grandchildren saved and, and a great revival. He knows how hungry you are, Pastor, for the desires you have. In Jesus' name, Pastor Benny, we're putting you under the bonus program as of as of 8.35, July 24th, 2013. Pastor Benny, we're, not that you haven't been under there, but we're going to make sure you're under there as from this moment. Let's all stretch our hand toward our pastor. In Jesus' name, Lord, I ask you to bless this man of God. Use him mightily with his wife in Jesus' name in this church and in this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for the bonus program. But my God shall supply all uh, bonus program. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel good. I feel like God's going to grant some desires. Could you just receive it tonight? Just, just receive it. Let's stand and receive it. Lord Jesus Christ. Let's all pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you in the name of Jesus. You gave everything for us. So the bonus program is, 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 is not really seem extra to you. Because you're a God. You're God. And we ask you, Jesus, everyone in this building tonight, and everyone that they come in contact to and pray for, that you would slip under your bonus program. Psalms 37 and verse 4. That not only this congregation and this people here tonight, at the sound of this message in the Word of God, will receive the bonus program and execute the bonus program and utilize the bonus program. That the desires of their heart would be fulfilled. Because most of them we know are spiritual desires. We know that, Jesus. And we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you who shed your blood that we could be covered. As John in his, in his orchestra sang tonight, there's power in that blood. And we know that's the main thing. But Lord, you know we're human. And you know sometimes we're weak. And you know sometimes we lack faith. But I ask you, Jesus, forget all that and slide us under your bonus program for the desires of our heart, especially the spiritual desires will be met. And everyone said, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise.